Learn English with the Bible. Exodus 13 The Law of the Firstborn Then the Lord said to Moses, Give every firstborn male to me. Every firstborn male among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. Moses said to the people, Remember this day, the day you left Egypt. You were slaves in that land. The Lord with his great power brought you out of it. You must not eat bread made with yeast. Today, in the month of Abib, you are leaving Egypt. The Lord made a promise to your ancestors. The Lord promised to give you the land of these people, the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The Lord will lead you to this land where much food grows. There you must celebrate this feast during the first month of every year. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the seventh day there will be a feast to honor the Lord. So for seven days you must not eat any bread made with yeast. There must be no bread made with yeast anywhere in your land. On that day you should tell your son, we are having this feast because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This feast will help you remember. It will be like a mark on your hand. It will be like a reminder on your forehead. This feast will remind you to speak the Lord's teachings. This is because the Lord used His great power to bring you out of Egypt. So celebrate this feast every year at the right time. The Lord will take you into the land of the Canaanites. He promised to give this land to you and your ancestors. Then you must give him every firstborn male. And every firstborn male animal must be given to the Lord. Buy back every firstborn donkey by offering a lamb. If you don't want to buy the donkey back, then break its neck. You must buy back from the Lord every firstborn of your sons. From now on your son will ask you, what does this mean? You will answer, with his great power, the Lord brought us out of Egypt. We were slaves in that land. In Egypt the king was stubborn. He refused to let us leave. But the Lord killed every firstborn male in Egypt, both human and animal. That is why I sacrifice every firstborn male animal to the Lord. And that is why I buy back each of my firstborn sons from the Lord. This feast is like a mark on your hand. And it is like a reminder on your forehead. It will help you remember that the Lord brought us out of Egypt with His great power. The Way Out of Egypt The king sent the people out of Egypt. God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country. That road is the shortest way. But God said, they might think they will have to fight. Then they might change their minds and go back to Egypt. So God led them through the desert toward the Red Sea. The Israelites were dressed for fighting when they left the land of Egypt. Moses carried the bones of Joseph with him. Before Joseph died, he had made the sons of Israel promise to do this. 
He had said, When God saves you, remember to carry my bones with you out of Egypt. The people of Israel left Sukkot and camped at Etham. Etham was on the edge of the desert. The Lord showed them the way. During the day he went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. And during the night the Lord was in a pillar of fire to give them light. They could travel during the day or night. The pillar of cloud was always with them during the day. And the pillar of fire was always with them at night. Exodus 14 Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back to pi Hahirath. Tell them to camp for the night between Migdal and the Red Sea. This is near Baal Zephon. The king will think, the Israelites are lost, trapped by the desert. I will make the king stubborn again so he will chase after them. But I will defeat the king and his army. This will bring honor to me. Then the people of Egypt will know that I am the Lord. The people of Israel did just as they were told. The king chases the Israelites. The king of Egypt was told that the people of Israel had already left. Then he and his officers changed their minds about them. They said, What have we done? We have let the people of Israel leave. We have lost our slaves. So the king prepared his war chariot and took his army with him. He took 600 of his best chariots. He also took all the other chariots of Egypt. Each chariot had an officer in it. The Lord made the king of Egypt stubborn. So he chased the Israelites who were leaving victoriously. The king of Egypt came with his horses, chariot drivers, and army. And they chased the Israelites. They caught up with the Israelites while they were camped by the Red Sea. This was near pi Hahirath and Baal Zephon. The Israelites saw the king and his army coming after them. They were very frightened and cried to the Lord for help. They said to Moses, What have you done to us? Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There were plenty of graves for us in Egypt. We told you in Egypt, let us alone. Let us stay and serve the Egyptians. Now we will die in the desert. But Moses answered, Don't be afraid. Stand still and see the Lord save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again after today. You will only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Command the people of Israel to start moving. Raise your walking stick and hold it over the sea. The sea will split. Then the people can cross the sea on dry land. I have made the Egyptians stubborn so they will chase the Israelites. But I will be honored when I defeat the king and all of his chariot drivers and chariots. I will defeat the king, his chariot drivers and chariots. Then Egypt will know that I am the Lord. The angel of God usually traveled in front of Israel's army. Now, the angel of God moved behind them.
Also, the pillar of cloud moved from in front of the people and stood behind them. So the cloud came between the Egyptians and the people of Israel. The cloud made it dark for the Egyptians. But it gave light to the Israelites. So the cloud kept the two armies apart all night. Moses held his hand over the sea. All that night the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind. And so he made the sea become dry ground. The water was split. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry land. A wall of water was on both sides. Then all the king's horses, chariots and chariot drivers followed them into the sea. Between two and six o'clock in the morning, the Lord looked down from the pillar of cloud and fire at the Egyptian army. He made them panic. He kept the wheels of the chariots from turning. This made it hard to drive the chariots. The Egyptians shouted, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them and against us Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Hold your hand over the sea. Then the water will come back over the Egyptians, their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses raised his hand over the sea. And at dawn the water became deep again. The Egyptians were trying to run from it. But the Lord swept them away into the sea. The water became deep again. It covered the chariots and chariot drivers. So all the king's army that had followed the Israelites into the sea was covered. Not one of them survived. But the people of Israel crossed the sea on dry land. There was a wall of water on their right and on their left. So that day the Lord saved the Israelites from the Egyptians. And the Israelites saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the great power that the Lord had used against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord. And they trusted the Lord and his servant Moses. Exodus 15 the Song of Moses Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. Because he is worthy of great honor. He has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. The Lord gives me strength and makes me sing. He has saved me. He is my God and I will praise him. He is the God of my ancestors, and I will honor him. The Lord is a great warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots and soldiers of the king of Egypt he has thrown into the sea. The king's best officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters covered them. They sank to the bottom like a rock. Your right hand, Lord, is amazingly strong. Lord, your right hand broke the enemy into pieces. In your great victory, you destroyed those who were against you. Your anger destroyed them like fire burning straw. Just a blast of your breath. And the waters were blown back. The moving water stood up like a wall. And the deep waters became solid in the middle of the sea. 
The enemy bragged. I'll chase them and catch them. I'll take all their riches. I'll take all I want. I'll pull out my sword. And my hand will destroy them. But you blew on them with your breath. And covered them with the sea. They sank like lead. In the powerful water. Are there any gods like you, Lord? No. There are no gods like you. You are wonderfully holy. You are amazingly powerful. You do great miracles. You reached out with your right hand. And the earth swallowed our enemies. You keep your loving promise. You lead the people you have saved. With your strength you will guide them. To your holy land. The other nations will hear this and tremble with fear. Terror will take hold of the Philistines. The leaders of the tribes of Edom will be very frightened. The powerful men of Moab will shake with fear. The people of Canaan will lose all their courage. Those people will be filled with fear. When they see your strength, they will be as still as a rock. They will be still until your people pass by, Lord. They will be still until the people you have bought from slavery pass by. You will lead your people and place them. On your very own mountain. Lord, that is the place that you made for yourself to live. Lord, that is the temple that your hands have made. The Lord will rule forever. The horses, chariot drivers and chariots of the king of Egypt went into the sea. And the Lord covered them with water from the sea. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry land. Then Aaron's sister Miriam, who was a prophetess, took a tambourine in her hand. All the women followed her, playing tambourines and dancing. Miriam told them, Sing to the Lord, because he is worthy of great honor. He has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. The Bitter Water Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea. The people went into the desert of Shur. They traveled for three days in the desert but found no water. Then they came to Marah where there was water. But they could not drink it because it was too bitter. That is why the place was named Marah. The people grumbled to Moses. They asked, What will we drink? Moses cried out to the Lord. So the Lord showed him a tree. Moses threw the tree into the water. And the water became good to drink. There the Lord gave the people a rule and a law to live by. There he also tested their loyalty to him. He said, You must obey the Lord, your God. You must do what the Lord said is right. You must obey all his laws and keep his rules. If you do these things, I will not give you any of the sicknesses I gave the Egyptians. I am the Lord. I am the Lord who heals you. Then the people traveled to Elim. At Elim there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees. So the people camped there near the water. Exodus 16 The people demand food. 
Then the whole Israelite community left Elim. They came to the desert of Sin. This place was between Elim and Sinai. They came to this place on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had left Egypt. Then the whole Israelite community grumbled to Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, It would have been better if the Lord had killed us in the land of Egypt. There we had meat to eat. We had all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into this desert. You will starve us to death here. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will cause food to fall like rain from the sky. This food will be for all of you. Every day the people must go out and gather what they need for that day. I will do this to see if the people will do what I teach them. On the sixth day of each week, they are to gather twice as much as they gather on other days. Then they are to prepare it. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, This evening you will know that the Lord is the one who brought you out of Egypt. Tomorrow morning you will see the greatness of the Lord. He has heard you grumble against him. We are nothing. You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. And Moses said, Each evening the Lord will give you meat to eat. And every morning he will give you all the bread you want. He will do this because he has heard you grumble against him. You are not grumbling against Aaron and me. You are grumbling against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Speak to the whole community of the Israelites. Say to them, Meet together in front of the Lord, because he has heard your grumblings. So Aaron spoke to the whole community of the Israelites. While he was speaking, they looked toward the desert. There the greatness of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumblings of the people of Israel. So tell them, at twilight you will eat meat. And every morning you will eat all the bread you want. Then you will know I am the Lord, your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning dew lay around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost were on the desert ground. When the Israelites saw it, they asked each other, What is that? They asked this question because they did not know what it was. So Moses told them, This is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Lord has commanded, Each one of you must gather what he needs. Gather about two quarts for every person in your family. So the people of Israel did this. Some people gathered much and some gathered little. Then they measured it. The person who gathered more did not have too much. The person who gathered less did not have too little. Each person gathered just as much as he needed. Moses said to them, Don't keep any of it to eat the next day. But some of the people did not listen to Moses. They kept part of it to eat the next morning. But it became full of worms and began to stink. So Moses was angry with these people. Every morning each person gathered as much food as he needed. But when the sun became hot, it melted away. On the sixth day the people gathered twice as much food. They gathered four quarts for every person. 
So all the leaders of the community came and told this to Moses. Moses said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is the Sabbath, the Lord's holy day of rest. Bake what you want to bake, and boil what you want to boil today. But save the rest of the food until tomorrow morning. So the people saved it until the next morning, as Moses had commanded. And none of it began to stink or have worms in it. Moses told the people, Eat the food you gathered yesterday. Today is a Sabbath, the Lord's day of rest. So you will not find any out in the field today. You should gather the food for six days. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day. On that day there will not be any food on the ground. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather food, but they couldn't find any. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will all you people refuse to obey my commands and teachings? Look, the Lord has made the Sabbath a day of rest for all of you. So on the sixth day he will give you enough food for two days. But on the Sabbath each of you must stay where you are. Do not leave your house. So the people rested on the Sabbath. The people of Israel called the food manna. The manna was like small white seeds. It tasted like wafers made with honey. Then Moses said, The Lord said, Save two quarts of this food for your descendants. Then they can see the food that I gave you to eat. I did this in the desert when I brought you out of Egypt. Moses told Aaron, Take a jar and fill it with two quarts of manna. And save this manna for your descendants. So Aaron did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Aaron put the jar of manna in front of the Ark of the Covenant. He did this so it could be kept. The Israelites ate manna for forty years. They ate it until they came to the land where they settled. They ate manna until they came to the edge of the land of Canaan. The measure they used for the manna was two quarts. It was one-tenth of an ephah.